Uh, let me just go through them again. Yeah, we'll just go across the table. Yellow is joy. White is righteousness. Green is healing. Silver is strength. Red is blood or redemption. Orange is fire of God. Blue is grace. Purple is authority. Pink is joy. And gold is glory. So we have a summer of amazing colors and a summer of uh, revival. And let me just say this, although we're not going to um, center in on Tom Moose exactly, but I will say that it is the fourth month and Tom Moose begins the summer season. So there's three months of summer, or really of all of the seasons, but Tom Moose is that fourth month which begins the summer season, the summer of uh, re, uh, revival, and the way to move through this season of time is to move by faith, watch your mouth, and call those things that be not as though uh, they are. And so remember this as we go through uh, this morning that the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Dalit, and Dalit is a door, so a pathway or a doorway, we're walking through that into this summer uh, of revival, and you'll remember that as we go through our lesson today, and what got me to this lesson is, you know how, if you're familiar with uh, YouTube, uh, you'll, you'll see all of these videos, and they've all got names. And, and, and they, they kind of get you to click on it because of the, of the name. And so I, I don't know who it was, and I didn't click on this video, but here was the name, and it took up the entire picture there on YouTube when it's listing the videos, and it says, The Storm is Upon Us. So it took me to another storm in Luke chapter 8. And listen, I always get back to this. We have got to be released into a realm of faith that we haven't touched yet. And the reason faith is the commodity of exchange in the kingdom of God. And we're coming into that place, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and the faith is the exchange in that kingdom rule or that kingdom come. Not money, not credit cards, it is faith. And this time frame uh, is about positioning ourselves so we can see. And the only way that you can see the stars and, and the moon and the sun and the planets and all of that, the only way that you can see them is to get outside of your house and go out underneath all of that atmosphere. They're there. They're always there. But you won't see them if you don't take a different position. So we're going to position our faith so that we can have a commodity ex of exchange in this kingdom uh, realm. So in Acts chapter 14, here's how I got to the door. Uh, and when they had gathered the church together. Now this is the beginning of the church. This is why we gather. When they gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done. And we have done that this morning. And they prayed for one another. And, they, and it says they rehearsed the things that God had done and how he had opened the door of faith. Faith is a door. So faith is a door. Faith is the way out of an enclosed place. From time to time, we think that we've been 
shut in. We've been enclosed. It's a small place. Maybe I don't have much influence. Maybe I'm not causing much to happen. It's a place when you're inside of that closed location, you feel like you cannot see beyond the present uh, circumstances that you have right now. But let me just say this, and this is just an outrageous statement, but if you go beyond that door of faith, if you step through that door of faith, I want to say, according to the Word of God, that there's no more limitations. When you walk through that door of faith, the impossible becomes possible. The mountains move when you speak to them, and the declared thing is Finally established. We're living in one of the most important times in history. I'll just say it like that. It's an important time. And God has arranged it so that this important time that's going on right now includes you and I and includes our faith. And our faith is the key to victory. We've talked about it many times, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is being sure of the things that we hope for. We don't see them, but we're sure of the things that we hope for and believing for the things that we do not see. And I heard this little advertisement of this little little uh, child that was in this hospital and he, and this little baby said hope is never ever 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 giving up yeah. tell your neighbor I'm not giving up I'm not giving up I'm not giving up so Hebrews chapter 11 I love it describes I'm going to read it to you these it's called the hall of faith this this chapter who through faith, through faith, through the door of faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and defeated foreign enemies. What a vision statement right there. But in order for that to be authentic, listen, we talk about that. I want it to be real. I want it to be authentic in my life. I don't want it to have words that have no power or no meaning or no result behind them. And Isaiah 55 lays it out as simple as it can be. The rain falls to the earth due to the degree that the water evaporates off of the earth. It forms a cloud and then it rains again. You see the cycle of it. It rains. It evaporates. It forms a cloud. It rains. It evaporates. It forms a cloud and it rains. That's how it works. And it goes on to say in Isaiah 55, so shall my word be that is spoken. It shall not return void. It is forming a cloud. At some point it's going to rain and it will accomplish whatever it was sent to do. It's a cycle. It's going to happen, but you have to add your faith to it and we never, ever, ever, ever give up. When we say the word, God watches over his word to perform it. Shout, done! Listen, I know we can be in stuff that's very complicated. Yeah, it's very complicated, but there's something in us that is greater. And it's in our mouth, and it's capturing the prophetic unction of the word of the Lord. That's why all these prophetic words are up here. It's why on the back of your bulletin, there are 10, I think, or whatever it is, prophetic words. We put it in our mouth. We capture the prophetic unction of the word of the Lord. And here's what it does. It's just like the rain and then the evaporation and then the clouds and then the rain. The cycle is it loose your words spoken by faith. No, I don't see it. No, I don't understand it. I don't know how the rain evaporates. I don't know how it forms a cloud. I don't 
don't know any of that, but I just believe, and I believe that it loosens success into the atmosphere and into our thinking, and as a man thinks, so is he. Words govern this kingdom system by which we live, and we have prayed ever since we got saved, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I was just remembering, listen, y'all out there, I was remembering this happened when Deanna and I used to travel all the time, and we were in Topeka, and I just call these two ladies battle axes. Now, they're in heaven, and they're still battle axes. No telling what they're in charge of up there. And this one woman, she was about 150 years old then, but she slapped me on my chest. We're up there, and Deanna and I are the speakers. And here she comes, and she slaps me on the chest, about knocks me over. She prays in tongues at the top of her lungs, and then she said, Sandy, the Lord says, your words are going to fall like embers of fire on the strongholds of the uh, enemy. And then I, rem I remember that, my words, my words, my words are going to fall. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about words. We're talking about faith. We're talking about hope. We're talking about the children of uh, the hall of uh, faith. And I remembered this, I read this years ago that, that when, now this was years ago, I don't know if it is true now, but when you would go into uh, India and you would go to, into the palace or into the home of royalty, you left with a gift of gold. So I'm believing today, as we've come to the house of royalty, we are a house of royalty. We are a royal priesthood that we're going to leave here with a gift of gold. We're going to leave here with a gift of revelation. We're going to leave here with a gift of healing. We're going to leave here with a gift of help and hope and, and faith. And there are new levels to every assignment that is on our life. And it's going to take faith and an anointing for this next level. Yes, say amen. And the activation for this, be it unto you according to your faith. So when I saw that, is this good? When I saw this on, on YouTube when it says the storm. Now, I don't know what they were talking about. Maybe they were talking about the storm of the Holy Spirit, or maybe they were talking about the other storm. I don't know what they were talking about, but it got me to Luke chapter 8. Now, I'll just read it to you. Uh, and it came to pass on a certain day. You know, sometimes I just like to look up words in the Strong's Concordance, so I looked up that word certain. It came to pass not on just any day or a day or Tuesday or Wednesday. It happened on a certain day, so I looked it up. And it's not just any day, it's a certain day. Certain is destined. Certain is sure to happen. Certain is agreed on. So I'm just going to read in between uh, the lines. Hey, here's how it could have happened. You got Jesus, you got God, you got the Holy Spirit before the foundations of the earth. They might have been there. They might have had their calendar out. And they said, Jesus, when you get down there, there's going to be a certain day on this calendar that something amazing is going to happen because I'm going to show a group of people where their faith is because I've got to have their faith. Our part is faith. My part is power. They've got to understand where their faith is. So they may have put that on the calendar this certain day may have been when Jesus saw his father. You know, he said, I don't do anything unless I see my father uh, doing it. And he was doing it and working it so this group of disciples could know what their level of faith was and the level of faith that they could have. Shout certain day. 
It's destined. It's sure to happen. It's been agreed on. And it goes on to say, now it came to pass on a certain day that Jesus went into a ship with his disciples and he said to them, let's go over to the other side. Let's go over to the other side. And here's what I like about it. They just launched forth. I don't know whether they were planning on going anywhere. I don't know if they knew for it. He just says, we're going to go to the other side of this uh, lake. But, say but. You know, sometimes there's always a but. You know what I'm saying. So let's go over to the other side. Hey, things are great. Life is good. Let's go over to the other side. And they launched uh, forth. And But as they sailed. He fell asleep on a pillow. I mean, he was dead out, as we say, and while he is sleeping and snoring on this pillow. Okay, 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 yes. He fell asleep on this pillow and there came a storm. The storm is upon us. That's how I got there. And so there came a storm on the lake. And the ship began to fill up with water, the Bible says. And they were in danger. And so they came to him and they woke him up out of his sleep. And before he can even, like, get awake, I mean, I don't know how it works. He's all God and he's all man. So you know how it is when you wake us up out of a, like we're dead out asleep, and they, say, he, the, they said, Master, Master, uh, we, we perish, and, and so we got up, he got up out of the hinder part of the ship, whatever that means, rebuked the wind, right, the water that was getting in there, and it, see, it ceased, and there was calm, and here's what he said, oh, Oh my gosh, thank you so much for saving my life. Thank you so much for waking me up out of my nap. Thank you. No, he said, where is your faith? Tell your neighbor, where's yours? With everything that is going on, in the nations, like name a nation, and in our nation, and the media reports, and now we've got, and we've got COVID, and people are sick, and things are just wrong. We've got to, where's our faith? Where's our faith? Because what can happen, die, and, and we've talked about that, I'm up. I'm down, I'm in, I'm out, I'm afloat, I'm drowning, I'm good, I'm bad, I'm happy, I'm sad. Tell your neighbor, it makes me dizzy thinking about it. It just says dizzy. Where's my faith? Things are good. And they launched forth. And then life. Well, I was going to get that done, and then life happened. Well, I was going to get that fixed, but life happened. Well, I wanted to go, and I planned on going, but life happened. I said I would do it, I know, but life happened. Have you ever used that term, well, life happened? Well... Dr. Carolyn Leaf, a neurosurgeon for about 25 years and 
She was in South Africa, now she's in America. Many of you have read her books and has an amazing podcast on YouTube. And here's what Dr. Carolyn Leaf says about life happening. It's a book called, Who Switched Off My Brain? Life happening can be an excuse for wasting time, anointing resources and energy. Now don't, don't look at anybody, just, I'm just quoting Dr. Carolyn Leaf, quote, deception can sometimes be hidden in an emotion. If an emotion left unchecked and not dealt with can deceive us into thinking something is right to do when it is absolutely not right. That's what's going on right now. We're being, the media is, is doing its best to determine how we're going to feel about something. So our emotions left unchecked can deceive us into thinking something is right to do when it is absolutely not right to do. Deception can make you believe something that isn't even true. I'm just quoting from Dr. Carolyn Lee. So in that context, life happening should not even be an option. We should be happening to life. We should not shift our vision to adjust to the circumstances or the circumstances that someone tries to create for you. End of quote. So, they're on the boat with Jesus. And there's this unique opportunity that is theirs to grow in faith, and develop. Now they don't they don't know that. But an opportunity to grow in faith, find out where their faith is and grow in that area and then life happen in the in the form of a storm and they forget everything. Do I have a witness? Jesus just said 30 minutes before the storm that's upon us. Let's go over to the other side. Jesus was confident in them. So confident. I, I want Jesus to be confident in us. Jesus was obviously, he, there, there was something that they were working out. But Jesus was so confident that he got his pillow and he laid down and he went snoring asleep. Oh, this it sounds like a grizzly bear, doesn't it, or something. So check it out. In my study, I found out that they could have walked to the other side of the lake. They could have just walked. But Jesus knew where their faith was. And Jesus knew what was ahead of them. So he set up a situation. And there came down a storm on the lake as if the storm was nowhere else. Have you ever felt like that? Everybody is doing great, and they're surviving, and they're prospering, and life is good, but the storm is on your lake. Not their lake, your lake, and no one else's. But Jesus is in your boat. So obviously, they wake him up because they don't want to die. He rebukes the wind. He rebukes the waves, and he asks them a very interesting question, as we've already talked about. He didn't say, thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for, I was so dead out, I was snoring. And I didn't even know the storm was going. Have you ever slept through a storm? 
you know, some people just can sleep like that. Thanks for waking me up. And then he didn't say, oh, I know you guys were afraid. Oh, just don't worry about a thing. No, he says, where? Now, of course, that's my rendition of the whole thing. Where is your faith? While he's standing in the boat and he's changing the weather. But they, they had faith, obviously, because he didn't say, well, you don't even have any faith. He said, where is your faith? They lost it. Hey, you have faith. It's somewhere. You had faith a few minutes ago. But listen, let me tell you something. As we go forward in this summer of revival, not everybody's going to like that. Not everybody is going to like all the changes that are going to be happening in the next few weeks and months. They're not. So our faith needs to be located. And so it's not a question if we have faith. We do. Sometimes we just lose track of it. It's not like we need more faith. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. They just needed to find the faith that they had already. Listen, faith is the ability to see what hadn't manifested yet. Now, we've got to get that. I know we talk about we're going to the other side, but they couldn't see it because of the storm. Now, it came to pass on a certain day. Certain also means reliable and dependable and a done deal. Now, I love that, don't you? And launch forth means they left the safety of the shore. So, let me just ask this. Have you ever got in somebody's boat that you knew was reliable. I know you know this, Chris. You knew they were reliable. You knew they were dependable. You launched forth in whatever it was that you were going to participate in with them. You were certain that a storm wasn't going to happen, and it did. But as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. There's that but again. Jesus got up. Jesus spoke, then the storm, and, and he uh, calmed the storm. So it is just time that we, if the storm is upon us, whatever that might mean, let's locate our faith. As long as Jesus was up there with them, as long as Jesus was casting out devils and healing the sick and teaching them about uh, the kingdom, as long as Jesus was... Um, in view, all was well. As long as Jesus just kept, kept moving and speaking and doing miracles, everything was okay. As long as they could see something, they were all right. As long as he was visibly working in their life, everything was uh, fine. But he fell asleep and he was out of view. And my doctrine says God doesn't sleep or slumber. And he's snoring. Your faith has been located. You've got seeing is believing faith. That's not faith. As long as Jesus is awake, faith. We're on the hunt for our faith. And there came down a storm on the lake. Up to that time, it was peaceful. Up to that time, it was calm. No worries. Everything was... I, I prefer that, of course. Peaceful lake turns stormy. So we've just located our faith. I've got fair weather faith. I prefer that. I've got fair weather faith. I've got peaceful lake faith. They woke up. Master, master, don't you even care? He said, we're going to the others. We forgot what he said. We have got to get in the word and say that. He said, we're going to the other side. 
but faith can be lost in the things that we say. Faith can be lost in the things that we feel. Faith can be lost in the things that we see. I feel like I'm perishing. I feel like I'm not going to get well. I feel like we're not going to uh, uh, make it. I feel like America may go to war. I feel like I don't know what to do. I feel like we're quitting. And here's what Dr. Carolyn Leaf would say. You've got feeling faith. As long as I don't have that scared feeling, I've got faith. And then she says, whatever you feel is what you say. Mm. So our faith has been located. I've got seeing faith. I've got fair weather faith. I've got feeling faith. Feeling. Isn't that a song? Feeling. I wish Deanne was here and she could just sing that. She knows all those songs like that. I don't know any of those songs. You know what? You never know when the storm's going to come. But we've got the word in us. And we're going to say that. We are going to declare the goodness of God. Here's what Betty says every time I go see her, bless her heart. God is good. And then there's somebody that she listens to, and up on the back of his church, it says, God is absolutely good. God is absolutely good. So we got to get that word on the inside of us. We've got to declare the goodness of God. There may be a storm, but I'm going to the other side because that's what Jesus said to me. People may not get it, but I'm going to go to the other side. I might be misunderstood, but I'm going to go to the other side. I might be sick, but I'm going to go to the other side. I may have to face my fear, but I'm going to the other side. I might be talked about a little bit. You know what I'm saying. But I'm going to go to the other side. I may decide to do this or that. When confronted with a situation or a choice that is mine, but somebody thinks you should have made that choice, you hear what I'm saying? I might, but I'm going to the other side. So we're going to redo today and we're going to relocate our faith. So stand to your feet and say this after me I'm going to the other side. I've got going to the other side faith. I've got wind calming faith. I've got wave rebuking faith. I found my real faith and I'm keeping it there. So lift your hands. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, that faith is our portion today. We are locating our faith. We're moving together in faith. We are becoming skillful with our faith. We are using our faith like a servant. We are saying that our faith pleases you, O oh God. We are saying that our faith calls those things that be not as though they are. We are becoming skillful in all of that. We are decreeing a thing with our faith, and it is being established in the earth. We are uh, declaring thy kingdom come by faith. Thy will be done by faith in this earth realm by faith as it is in heaven by faith. I thank you that our faith has been fed. It has been stirred. It has been added to. It has been uh, uh, stirred up today in this house, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. You're, you're, we're in the middle by faith of a summer of revival, renewal, transformation, reformation, and a redo, and a relocation. And I bless you, God, and thank you that you are enthroned upon our praise as we trust and have faith only in you. In Jesus' name, put your hands together and thank God.